Yes, don't let something you could have prevented cost your facility. Hi, my name is Jean Sayer, and I am the Director of Clinical Education for the Comfort Company. Today, I would like to review the basics of pressure ulcers, consisting of statistics, providing information for skin integrity, wheelchair considerations, and providing solutions for your seating and positioning in your facility to help prevent pressure ulcers. Did you know that pressure ulcers affect about 1 million people in the U.S. and that the incidence in long-term care patients are between 2.7 and 29 percent? In fact, 1.2 percent of the total health care costs in the U.S. derives from caring for pressure ulcers with over 11 billion dollars spent on hospital stays. The CMS recognized this and in 2008 they instituted a policy to withhold reimbursement to acute care, rehab, and skilled care facilities for acquired pressure ulcers during their care. So yes, that definitely means that you could be liable for any pressure ulcer developed under your care. The CDC stated that the average cost per pressure ulcer is between $3,500 and $60,000 per ulcer, and that there's an astounding estimated 600,000 deaths per year due to complications from ulcers. Seventy percent of the pressure ulcers are preventable. Not all, but most. And our judgments in the judicial system has been estimated over ten million dollars. This has been seen and recognized by the attorneys. We have all seen the advertisements on television stating that if you have a loved one in a skilled care facility that you feel that has been neglected or they're suffering from any type of pressure sores to please contact their office immediately. Because the attorneys have done the research and they do know the judicial system first of all is on their side and that they'll retain a settlement for their clients. Because they also know that most ulcers are preventable. The skin is our primary defense mechanism. Not only does it keep our organs in but it's also helping to keep infections out. But the most important fact of skin is that it is sensory. It's sensitive to pressure, temperature, and pain. So what is a pressure ulcer? A pressure ulcer is resulted from ischemic hypoxia of the tissues caused by prolonged pressure on them, normally over a bony prominence. And this is frequently seen in the sacrum areas, the elbows, the heels, the lateral portion of the ankles, the medial portion of the knees, the scapulae, the hips, and the occipital bone. The pressure ulcers are often also seen in our elderly, our high-risk patients, especially those that are obese and suffering from chronic diseases, infections, injuries, that have poor nutritional state, immobilized or cachetic patients. The pressure ulcers are graded by stages from severity the least severity being a stage one to the most severe being stage four. You may also hear other words that mean the same exact thing as pressure ulcers, such as bed sores, pressure sores, decubitus ulcers, and pressure necrosis. The one thing is, prevention of pressure ulcers is an essential part of daily care. the skin integrity and sensation of our patients. There are extrinsic factors, which are the primary physical forces, and the intrinsic factors, which is a secondary factor. The secondary factors coincide with the primary factors, which are the pressure, shear, moisture, and heat and temperature. The secondary factors play a significant role in pressure ulcer development. We have nutrition, incontinence, mobility, cognition, body type and weight, age, rest, and tobacco. Nutrition plays a role in having decreased intake, malabsorption, if there is a low level of zinc, which zinc is required for protein synthesis and repair. Incontinence, we have urine and fecal matter that promote acidity. Fecal incontinence has a higher prevalence rate for pressure ulcer than urine. Mobility, whether they are independent or dependent, depending on transfers, they are susceptible to pressure, 
friction and shear forces. Mobility, um, also you want to watch for the bed mobility along with any type of seating mobility. If that person has a body um, weight and type of being obese, you may want to watch for skin fold. And if they are underweight or have very bony prominence, they are also susceptible to breakdown. Age. As we get older, our sensation and um, will decrease at times. Uh, due to the decreased number of dermal blood vessels, the loss of our dermal elastin, and the increased skin permeability, which is the thin onion type skin, um, all these factors are increasing the susceptibility to pressure, friction, and shear. Rest. If a person is not having the appropriate amount of sleep, they will actually um, compromise their integrity of their not only their immune system and their availability of the healing process of their tissues. And tobacco. We all know that tobacco is the decreased vascularity um, and where we have pressure ulcers it will promote the lack of oxygen to that area which will prevent the healing process as well. So the in extrinsic factors, which are our primary factors. Um, what is pressure? Pressure is force divided by area. Force is actually the client weight, and area being the weight-bearing area. And then we have shearing and friction. Shearing are the forces that are exerted parallel to the skin and are generated by forces acting in the opposite directions. So shear occurs when a friction between a support surface and the skin holds soft tissues in place while underlying bone structures are pulled down by gravity. You would see this if you sat in a lazy boy recliner and reclined the back. You would feel your back skin actually um, sliding and your vertebrae inside sliding the opposite direction, that is called shearing. But we can't talk about shear without friction occurring. And friction is the resistance to movement between the patient's skin and external support surface. This type of force acts in a direction that is opposite to the patient movement. So this is where you have the abrasions occurring of the epidermis and the dermis, um, and the um, tissues which are attached to the bone are compressed and obstructed or torn in both shear and the frictional situations. These types of physical forces will occur when you are handling a person um, or whether they are sliding in and out of the bed or on and off the toilet, um, in and out of a chair. And also keep in mind that there are restless leg syndrome in per the persons in the bed and they, have the, they are having the um, restless leg syndrome. They are also susceptible to the friction of the bed surface. These are just some areas that are vulnerable to pressure ulcers depending on how your patient is um, lying daily in bed at, and at night or sitting. So we have the areas of supine, we have the skull area, which is the occipital area, we have the scapulae, we may have some elbow, the buttocks, the ischials, and the heel. If they're a side layer, we may have the wrist, the cheek, the ear, elbow on the lateral side, hip, lateral part of the knee, lateral part of the malleolus or the ankle, or the medial part of the ankle, and the foot. If they are lying in prone position, we may have, again, the ear, the cheek, the breast area, the wrist, the patella or knee area, and the toes. For a person who is unable to ambulate and they are chair confined, they would be at greatest risk in their coccygeal area, or the sacrum area, the vertebral, the spinal, scapulae, maybe the popliteal area, and the heel. 
So what we want to consider when we are positioning a person in a wheelchair. We want to make sure that the seat width is appropriate because if it's too narrow, we will have some pressure on the trochanters. We want to make sure the seat depth is appropriate because too deep will cause the person to sacral sit because we're always trying to find our stability and we're always trying to find our grounding. If the seat depth is too short, we also may have some issues on the, um, the sacral area and the back um, spinal area. And if the footrest is not at the appropriate height or length, it will, if it's too high, it will cause more pressure on the ischial tuberosities. And if it's too long, it'll cause pressure on the popliteal fossa or it will cause the person to shear and sacral sit. This also goes for the seat height if the person is a foot propeller. We want to make sure that we're positioning correctly for transfers and that we're not making it too hard for them to be able to heel strike because again they'll go into that posterior pelvic tilt which is the sacral sitting position. The sling seat we would like to avoid and place a solid seat. We want to avoid the hammocking effect, which also puts greater pressure on the trochanters and the ischial tuberosities in the sacral area. We want to look at the seat ankle to make sure that's appropriate, so we want to prevent, again, the shearing or the sacral sitting, to make sure we have the appropriate back height, and make sure the scapula is being um, prevented from any pressures, pressure points. And the armrest height, we want to make sure that the elbow has the appropriate pressure. And when we're looking at the wheelchair itself, we're looking at the frame angle and the tilt. We want to avoid any pressure on, again, on the coccygeal area or these um, ischial tuberosities. So what can we do to prevent with wheelchair positioning? When you have a person that's just low risk, you can use a general use cushion. Um, definitely want to use that solid seat insert and the type of back you may want to have um, a tension adjustable back or possibly even a solid back. Um, the foam and foam gel cushions would be appropriate. So for some comfort company products, a general use cushion would be a curve cushion, an elements with a gel, or a support pro series. A back, you may want to use the, uh, the radius back or the elements back, which is a tension adjustable back. But for those clients that we have, mostly in our long-term care facilities, they're going to be either at a moderate to a high-risk population. So what you normally want to do is you want to make sure that you're using a skin protection and positioning cushion. That is the optimal cushion that you want to use in your facility to prevent any type of pressure ulcers and to promote better positioning for your person. Definitely use the solid seat insert um, or rigidizing um, insert. And for the backs, you want to make sure that you're stabilizing that posterior pelvis, so you want to prevent that sacral sit. Uh, you want to make sure that you're going to use an angle adjustment to promote the thoracic extension of the spine, and you want to customize it to your person. The examples would be a foam gel cushion, an air cushion, again, a tension adjustable back, or an angle adjustable back. And some of the Comfort Company products that you may want to use would be a highlight, cushion, that's a skin protection. Um, the Ascent is also a skin protection cushion. Uh, a positioning cushion would be the Ridge. Now if you want the best of both worlds, you want to use a skin protection and positioning cushion. That would be the Saddle Series, the M2, um, and then we can get into some of the Air Cushions would be the Vicare, Adjuster, or Vector. Some examples for the back would be the Incrediback, the Incrediback Deep for a little bit more positioning needs, and the Actiback. And we also have the Actiback Deep. Now some clients we may have might be a little bit younger population. You, if they don't need a lot of um, upper thoracic stability, you can then go, um, use the Spider Back, which is a low back series. Again, for your high risk patients, um, for your patients that are going to be um, require tilt and recline, um, the PDG wheelchair series have wonderful options for you, and especially if you have foot propellers, uh, they would be able to still be in a tilt position and 
do pressure relief, but still be able to heel strike and propel themselves with their feet. Uh, the skin protection and positioning cushions that you would use for the high risk would be definitely contoured and customizable. We are definitely going to be using the either the Saddle Series, the M2, um, but probably at, if they're definitely at high risk, you're going to be using the Air, which would be the Vicare Adjuster or Vector. In the back, again, we're going to make sure that we want to customize the shape to them. So we're going to be either using the Incredibac Series or we're going to use the Actibac back to back deep um, to promote more positioning. You're definitely going to watch the cushion types again as we had talked about the general use skin protection, positioning, skin protection and positioning together and they're classified by the materials and the property values. We have foam, the viscoelastic foam, the solid gel, the viscous fluid and air. And we have some examples here. This is an example of a curve, just a simple foam cushion. That's our general use. Then we have our M2 cushion, which has a quadra gel. And the gel is actually segmented, so we'll prevent it from migrating and actually promote the better positioning and skin protection for your client. And then we have the best of all the cushions would be the air cushion which is the Vicare. This happens to be an adjuster cushion but we also have a vector cushion that gives you a little bit more versatility when you're doing your positioning. And let's not forget about other products and when we talked about the vulnerable areas we have the head and the ears. We have the um, on the credit back here we have the the head um, support and then we have a moldable headrest. Then we have the elbows to protect. We have our arm positioning that is moldable, but also we have gel packs in the elbow area if needed. We have the knees. We're going to protect our knees, especially for our amputees. We have our amp support that's actually angle adjustable. So it will um, assist in any adenomous um, support. And then also it will prevent any contractures because it is versatile and it is adjustable. And then we have our calves, which would be our single foot or complete feet, which would be the tall series to protect the calves. Um, I know personally I have used the single foots on uh, some of the power wheelchairs for some of the ALS or quadriplegics and protecting their calf for breakdown. I have used the complete, uh, the single foot tall. And in facilities, there has been um, many researches that have been promoting the use of heel protectors. And these are one of the best heel protectors that I have found is the MaxCare Air. It has the, the air in the heel, and it will prevent any type of pressure ulcers developing on the heel. Thank you so much for your participation in reviewing the basics of pressure ulcers. If you need any more information on the Comfort Company products, or if you would like to inquire about additional educational opportunities, please visit our website. Again, my name is Jean Sayer. I am the Director of Clinical Education for the Comfort Company. Thank you and have a good day.